Hey everyone, my name is Dave Cole, and I have one of uh, Joe Garland, or JD as you may know him, custom design aluminum scope wheels. Now, I, no doubt you've either seen these on a social media platform, or you've uh, maybe ordered one, or there may be something there uh, that, you, that you're aware about. I'm, I'm not going to go over any of the features. Uh, my intention is to show you how to install one of these if you've never done one before and to uh, do it correctly and to benefit the grades from it. Now this information is not something I derived, it's actually something that Joe has instructed me on how to probably install and gain the most benefit from his wheel. And that's what I'm going to share with you is the correct way to do this. So let's, let's go over a few things first. First thing is, hopefully you got one of his uh, combo packages, which include the wheel, the hub, uh, the pointer, the uh, bubble level, and all that. And I'm not trying to sell it to you. That's Joe's job. I'm going to show you how you benefit from what he makes um, and is better than what you could make yourself or you might buy from another uh, source. Okay, so I've gone ahead and taken the liberty of pre-installing this pointer to save time because it is time consuming. It's real important that it's done correctly. Um, one thing that is uh, that I use is I use a uh, level that actually you can't, it, it goes on the front of the scope and on the shroud and there's a bubble level in there and that tells me that the, the shroud and the or the bore and the scope are in alignment. Um, Joe can tell you, I don't remember the brand, he was the one that recommended one of those to me and I got it and I love it. And it, it absolutely makes sure everything is level. Now, I used it in addition to installing the bubble level on this. And it, it was time consuming. So when you put this on, and let me back up for just a second, you'll notice that I have my mounts as far away from the saddle as they will go and and that's because if you get these if you get your mounts too close to the saddle then you can possibly damage the parallax tube that's inside this it moves back and forth whenever you rotate uh, and you could damage or, or restrict it and your ranging is not going to work correctly i know this not personally but i know that it has happened and it can if you're if you don't do this so move it move it as far apart from the saddle as you possibly can and you'll benefit from that now also, I moved my pointer as far back as I could too. Now the pointer, when it comes, it's awfully coming in half and it goes together. So JD suggested that I install this screw first and tighten it down, okay? And there's another screw over here on the other side, but make sure that that's clamped down and, and holds the pointer, okay? And then I, I'm looking at the bubble here. You, you can't see it, but you know what bubble levels look like if you're shooting field target, you're very aware of this. So I compare it to the one that I had up here and I got this bubble and the bubble up here, I've got it all nice and level and start tightening down the other set, screw on, the, on this side and got it nice and snug. Now that, that also, I wanna highlight something else about these rings. When you install these, you do not need a T handle and uh, just use a just use a, a ham hand to install these. They need to be snug, they need to be somewhat tight, but don't over tighten them. All you're gonna do is crush the tube. That scope is not gonna move. We're shooting air guns, guys, okay? So it's not like these things kick like a, like, like a, a, a bear or something like that. So just keep that in mind. Do not over tighten so you do not damage the, uh, the scope. Okay, so I got the pointer on there. Now you will get in the combo, you will get a plastic one Personally, I like the aluminum. I've broken at least a couple of the plastic ones on accident, putting it in the bag, handling it, one thing or another, something catches on it, and bang, it breaks. So unless you have a spare, if you're gonna go with the plastic, uh, then make sure you got more than one. So if you have to replace it, you've got it. Okay, so we've gone over mounting the scope, we've gone over mounting the pointer and getting the bubble level level. So now let's go forward and I'll show you the um, tips that, that Joe has given me on installing his wheel so that you benefit the greatest from it. Okay, so no doubt, um, you've, if you haven't ordered from him before, if you order a wheel from anybody, you know, you have to know this, the diameter of the uh, parallax knob or turret, let's call it a turret. So if you, if you purchase something like some, just some inexpensive digital calipers, they don't have to be the expensive Japanese made ones. 
uh, you're just going to measure. You're going to you can get real close with these, and then I just kind of hold that snugly against the largest diameter portion of the turret, and that is the information that I provide him in what size I need the inner hub to be. It's very important so that when I install this, it fits like a glove. Now, if you're off a little bit, that's still okay because there's three millimeters of tolerance built into the inner hub, the collapsing ring that actually goes around this so that it doesn't do any damage to your parallax uh, turret. Um, that, that you got a little bit of fudge factor there. So you can be off and it will still work, but, but use something like this. Don't try to use like a ruler or something, really. And um, when you get it, the hub will fit down on there snugly, and I'm gonna show you how to put that on there next. Okay, I've taken the liberty to go ahead and put my uh, tape on the wheel that I'm going to use to mark for my yardages and everything. So. I'm going to give you a, a starter tip so that you have, you start from the you know the right starting point and that you can go forward and make sure that all the effort that you put into mounting this and marking it are accurate. I'll show you how to do that. Okay, so you've gotten your assembly in and you're ready to put the install. So where do you start? How do you do that? Well, I'll show you. So what I do is I go out and I'm, I, I go out to the, the range and I set my target out there at 55 yards and I actually measure it from about the front of the scope, not the front of the muzzle. So 55 yards and you know, I move my parallax to, to where that needs to be and you know, I'll say, okay, there's 55 yards right there. Image is sharp. It is, I know that that's the best image I can get through this scope and that that's where 55 yards is going to be. Okay, the next step is, and that's because that's why I put the tape on here, I'll show you. You'll notice that I make a little mark approximately right there. Now, that is, and I've measured it, I measure the apex. I go from the center of the hub to the furthest point, the, the largest, get the largest radius that I possibly can here because it is a benefit whenever you're ranging that get that ultra critical one or two, five yard measurement uh, in there. So. Uh, this is where I want my 55 yards to be. So that mark is, is, is where I'm, I want to start. So I've got this set at 55 yards, and I have to line this up to make sure it's at 55 yards. That's pretty easy. So I had the assembly, and I'm going to slip it up on here. And I'm going to get that little 55-yard mark somewhere right in there. It should be. It just has to be close. That's just a reference point. Keep in mind. And, <clears throat> excuse me, move this out a little bit, make sure I've got a, a, a little bit of a gap between the uh, pointer and the edge of the wheel. Okay, see that? So somewhere, I think it's close. Okay, let's start with that. Then, my set screw will come with a, with a I think this is a, well, I use a two millimeter wrench, a you know, two millimeter 564. So I'm gonna gently tighten this down. Now you'll notice I'm just using two fingers because this thing does not need to be just clamped on there. It's not going anywhere. You're going to move it slowly and slightly whenever you're ranging your targets. So I just get it on there about, oh, there it's snug. I'm going to call that good. So there it is. It's installed. So I've got my 55-yard mark. I've got my pointer on. Everything is good at this point. Now, some people said, well, what about your 10-yard mark? It doesn't matter where your 10-yard mark is. That's where it's going to be. It doesn't matter. It doesn't have to be at the big apex. It has to be down here at the bottom. You don't want to start here. That has no effect on it. You want the greatest radius you can at this point right here. That makes the biggest differences right there. So now I've got my 55-yard mark. I'm kind of checking my gap there again, making sure it's on there uh, somewhat straight. <clears throat> it looks like I could probably maybe snug it just a little bit more and call it good. Okay, I think we're on there. So what this set screw does is it actually it actually pushes down on the on that inner black 3D ring that he prints out. It collapses it, and so that's what tightens down on your parallax knob. So it keeps it from marring up, no set screw marks on your parallax knob anymore, and it secures it. Then what you can do is when you you want to remove it to put it back in your gun bag or your case or whatever you're using, you're set. And I can still get to my, my illumination knob here on my Hawk scope and make sure that I got plenty of clearance and, it, and it's all good. So at this point, there are no challenges. Now I'm ready to go out there and I'm ready to mark whatever I need to. And as far as like where you mark and, and, and so on and so forth on here, 
it is individual. It depends on what your holdovers are. You have to go out, and, and I did a little video on how I do mine, if you want to watch that, um, on how I do my range marking and stuff. So it doesn't really matter wherever you put this. It's all going to go back on there exactly where it was before, and you're going to know. So you're going to get the repeatability that you may not get in other uh, brands or makes of a parallax knot, but you're going to get that quality from JD. So there you go, folks. It's that easy. You cannot go wrong. And and I, by the way, I will cut the excess of this white tape off. Actually, I kind of use it. That's my 55 yard, and I may mark it on the edge here at 50. Or you know, depends on where it is. I may use this outside just as a reference point. So when I'm marking the flat surface, that's good to go. And I'm ready to go. Hope to see you at the uh, the next match.